Welcome to 50 Plus in Montgomery County, a monthly program that is a voice for many, produced by the Commission on Aging, of which I am a community member. This show is insightful for people of all ages, and each episode takes a fresh look at important issues by spotlighting older adults in the community, representatives of services and programs, and activities of interest to older adults. My name is Katie Smith. On this month's show, we will learn about the benefits of intergenerational activities for older adults, the community, and for young people. March is also Women's History Month. Here at 50 Plus, we celebrate the achievements of women both nationally and across the globe, as well as the women of Montgomery County, Maryland, whose contributions have made an impact on our community, our nation, and our world. Here to talk about the Jewish Council for the Aging, or JCA's, intergenerational program is Kathleen Dennis. Kathy is a senior director of the Heyman Interages Center at JCA. Hi, Kathy. Hello, good afternoon. How are you today? I'm great. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me today. I am glad you're here. Kathy, tell us, what is an intergenerational program? So an intergenerational program is a program that it intentionally unites generations. So we can say an intergenerational family that, of course, people from all ages within a family, but an intergenerational program intentionally puts generations together. And this helps to enrich the lives of all the participants and gives a lot of opportunities for discussion, sharing resources, and that's one of the things that we're really excited to do with Interages. Now, tell us about the Heyman Interages Center. What is it and how did it start? Sure. So Interages as a program began in 1986, and it was um, started by a gentleman, Austin Heyman. And when he, um, Interages was a standalone program. And when they decided to find um, other partners to help um, contribute and expand inner ages. They did interviews, and that's how um, JCA, Jewish Council for the Aging, got involved. And so when that happened, when inner ages moved into um, Jewish Council for the Aging, we put the program into a setting that we're calling the Austin Heyman Inner Ages Center. And what the center does is not only provide and develop programs, inter intergenerational programs for Montgomery Pro County, but we also talk to other intergenerational programs across the state. And we're also involved with Generations United, which is a national program that recognizes and promotes intergenerational program. Now, you said you partner with other organizations. What about specifically in Montgomery County? Sure. One of our main partners, of course, is Montgomery County Public Schools. We have a lot of volunteers that work within Montgomery County Schools. We also partner with the Montgomery County Volunteer Center. This is how we advertise a lot of our programs is through the Volunteer Center website and their programming. We partner with the um, Montgomery County Rec Department, which is responsible for a lot of the senior centers and senior programming across the county. We also um, partner with the public library and we have many programs that we've been doing with them including coming up in um, the first weekend in March we will be hosting a read across America program where volunteers will be at the libraries to on the weekend to uh, promote opportunities for children to come and read with older adults. Now read across America that sounds like fun so tell me about the fun and value of intergenerational programming. So intergenerational program, it's about mutual, mutual benefits. So people at all ages across the spectrum will receive benefits from participating in these programs. So if it's not fun, then it's not a good thing. So we really try to um, create opportunities that are fun for students, fun for children to learn on the side, we're, we're kind of cheating them a little bit because we're teaching them as we're playing games and doing other things. But we're also, um, working with adults and it has to be fun for them or they won't volunteer. So a lot of the programming we do really, um, in fact, I should say we don't sell volunteers to schools or organizations. We really try to sell the programs and the opportunities. And we intentionally um, do that because it's more than just volunteers. It's that whole idea of um, that mutual beneficial uh, opportunities. 
I want you, Kathy, to elaborate a little bit more on mutual benefit and talk to us about the different types of intergenerational programs. So um, there are several that are named. If you go, you know, online, you can find several different kinds. They, they, they say there are six program areas. We actually work in four of the program areas. So one is that young and old are together sharing programs. So we have a program um, called uh, share, actually, it's called Students Help and Reach Elders. And this program provides opportunity for students and um, older adults to participate in art, games, other kinds of activities together. And again, having fun. So we have situations where we might have a school and a senior center or senior living center, they share a parking lot. And so how interesting is that, that the students can just walk across the parking lot and have activities with the seniors at that senior center. We also have programs where students are helping seniors, help, helping older adults. Um, the one people most often think about is technology and helping uh, older adults learn how to use their cell phones, better uh, understand how to link their iPads or other um, devices to all the technology that's available. We also have programming where the um, older adults are helping students in schools. We have a wide variety of programs where students and, and older adults are reading together, so really helping to improve their reading. Um, we also have programs where we have one that's called Reader's Theater, where the um, students and senior adults do activities, uh, do a play together, and they're reading their roles and they might change their voices. The students and the seniors both change their roles. And that's one of the fun programs we get to hear a lot about because um, students are running through the hallways and their teachers are saying, where are you going? And they're, I'm late, I'm going to Reader's Theater. I need to get there. So again, we know the students are having a great time. We also have programs that again, they're doing together. Like we're promoting a food drive in April. And um, again, understanding the roles of what all of us as community members can play in helping the um, food situation here in Montgomery County. Uh, the one that we're not involved in that is getting a lot of advertising is around co-housing, where um, university and uh, students are uh, sharing housing with seniors. And that's something that's not yet in Montgomery County, but maybe it will be someday. So you mentioned share, sharing housing, share um, students helping and reaching elders. Now, is there a connection between intergenerational programs like share and the health and well-being of older adults? Absolutely. One of the things that um, is a mutual benefit to both, again, um, the, people call them the bookend generations, but I think it's across all generations, is the whole um, idea that being together, having conversations, developing that relationships really relieves social isol isolation. And it's not just about seniors being at home um, and feeling isolated because they couldn't get out during the pandemic or they um, don't have the ability to get around as much as they used to. It's beyond that. I mean, we have, we're running into a lot of situations where students are feeling very isolated as well. So having that opportunity to build a relationship with someone who's not a family member and exchange ideas, have a conversation um, for a young person, someone who values what you're doing and says that and has that time to focus specifically on you and nothing else. So it really does help um, across the gener generations to reduce isolation, uh, break down stereotypes. A lot of times we, um, we do training for students and talk about what stereotypes do you have about seniors, uh, people who are over 50, and they have a long list. And, and we do the same thing with seniors. They have a long list. What do you think about teenagers? And they got the list. And we uh, do a survey with them in the beginning of the program. And by the end of the program, when they retake the survey, their ideas have changed and they no longer feel the same. They no longer have the stereotypes that they had in the past. So for us, that's a big success. So as we talk about breaking down the stereotypes that young people may have, you know, how does how do these interactions impact their social emotional learning? Well, I think that, um, you know, that's, again, one of our focuses. And like I said, we're about academics as well. But I think that what's more important and when we are working with schools, 
we ask them, what are your needs? What can we do to help you? And so one of the programs um, we do, uh, it's been targeted at fifth graders. Um, and the whole idea is to help better prepare those fifth graders to go on to middle school. So here again, it's an activity that the students are doing with our 50 plus um, adults and they're enjoying this activity. The students are coming out of their shells. Um, they're leaving their fears behind, they're having fun. And we've gotten feedback from the teachers that it's really making a difference for these students. They're particip participating more in their other classes. Um, they're not as uh, quiet as before, which uh, maybe not always be a good thing, but they're just more actively engaged. And I think it is, again, because they get that one-on-one -on -one attention from those um, elderly or older adults that are working with them and helping them. Now, let's see, let's talk about, you know, diverse groups. How do intergenerational programs connect diverse groups and networks? And how do cultural traditions tie into intergenerational programming? Let me use another program that we have that um, points to that. Um, we have a program that's called Dialogues Across the Ages. In fact, it was one of Austin Heyman's favorite uh, <laughs> programs. He still talks about it now. And this program we have typically done in high school. We've just started doing it in middle school. And we are invited by the school to work with a class of students um, on a six to eight week basis. As I mentioned earlier, we go through, we, during, we do some age awareness training. What is it like to, um, uh, what are the beliefs and stereotypes that you have about senior uh, adults or about uh, high school or middle school students? And then we have weekly discussions. And one week discussion might be, you know, if it's near holidays, how do you celebrate Christmas? How do you celebrate Hanukkah? How do you celebrate um, Ramadan or the, the other uh, uh, holidays that you have as part of your culture? And so what's very interesting is that, again, here's this in some way obscure topic but the students and the adults are very, very actively engaged in what that means um, and what it means to their families. Um, and so what's very interesting as well is we're finding that, you know, a lot of students, especially Montgomery County has a large immigrant, immigrant population, and a lot of students have left their grandparents in, in the country where they came from originally. And it might be years past, it's not just recent immigrants, but, you know, they've left their parents, grandparents behind. And so this gives them an opportunity to um, learn about what older adults are doing around this different celebrations that they have, as well as them to share their memories of what, what it was like when they were with their grandparents. And here's another grandparent that they can be sharing that information and learning more about uh, those celebrations and cultures. We are, um, uh, we are a diverse volunteer pool. We continue to work on expanding that diversity. Um, within the volunteer pool. And so it's uh, it's something that we really strive for in, in promoting that intercultural relationship that we have with students and the volunteers, uh, older adult volunteers that we have. Now, Kathy, as we start to wrap, you mentioned that you have programming coming up in April. So do you have any other things that you're gonna have or, and, and, and if you do, will they be in person? Will they be virtual? Can you speak to sure. that? Briefly? So Yes, we had, um, sorry, <laughs> Katie, we, uh, I'm just so excited to talk about the program. We, um, of course, when the pandemic happened, we had to convert a lot of our programs uh, or create new programs that were virtual programs. And in fact, some of those programs have continued. And so we have a virtual book club um, that we will be starting new activities in, um, in the next uh, month. We're just finishing one now. And so that is a virtual activity done in partnership with Montgomery County Public Libraries. It's a four week program. The students and the older adults both read the same book, come together in discussions. It's a great time. And the, the students, because it's a virtual program, the requirement for Montgomery County Public Schools is that they have to create a project um, as a result of what they learn from that experience. And so a lot of them might uh, retitle the book or design a new book cover or write a book report or write about one character in that. And that's something that they submit to us and we share uh, broadly on our website and with the volunteers that are involved. We also have um, a program uh, JC is actually celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. And so we have students 
who are um, high school and middle school students who are interviewing uh, former uh, or past presidents, past lay leaders from Jewish Council for the Aging and uh, learning about what they remember, what they felt they contributed, um, what they continue to do for their communities. And those interviews will be available on our website as well. So we continue to have virtual programs and then we continue to, or are restarting or re-implementing a lot of the in-person programs. We have grand readers where we have older adults reading to second graders. Um, and it's again, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's eight to 10 weeks long. And so it really, again, builds that bond and builds that relationship. And for the senior uh, adults that are involved, it really is makes an impact. That's why they continue to be involved with us. And for the students, we have students who throughout their school years intersect with our programs, you know, as they grow older and are involved in other um, activities. And they continue to come back and join programs that they have a choice in joining, like the service learning programs, um, because they love the experience in uh, having those conversations with older adults. Wow, Kathy, we have one minute left. Um, so briefly tell me, you know, how can people get involved in volunteer with the Heyman Interagent Center? And then how can we stay in contact? Sure. So we do um, have uh, the Jewish Council for the Aging website. It's uh, www.accessjcesja.org and slash interages. You can find our programs on the website. We also have um, a phone number. We, uh, we are also out in the community doing recruitment activities. As I mentioned, we're having the food drive. So anybody interested can um, help join us on that. And again, the information is all on our website. Well, Kathy, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me. I really appreciate all of the information that you shared. And I would like to say happy 50th anniversary to JCA. Great. Thank you very much. Up next, we will talk with Megan Tracy Benson. Megan is a deputy director and co-founder of Empowering the Ages. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Ride on Flex, Montgomery County Department of Transportation's on-demand transit service to help you get around in defined Rockville and Glenmont Wheaton zones. There are no fixed stops or schedules. Just use the Ride on Flex app or call 240-301-3842 to book your ride. Curb to curb service is available for people with disabilities. Standard Ride on Fare policy applies. Visit rideonflex.com for service areas and hours of operation. Welcome back to 50 Plus in Montgomery County. Joining me is Megan Tracy Benson, who is the Deputy Director and Co-Founder of Empowering the Ages. Hi, Megan. Hi, Katie. Thanks for having me. How are you today? I'm doing well. Enjoying another Zoom from my home office here. <laughs> well, Megan, you helped to co-found Empowering the Ages. Share a little bit about your mission, vision, and values. Sure. So Empowering the Ages, or ETA, um, our mission is to strengthen social emotional well-being and provide life skills and create connections across generations to provide older and younger people with a sense of belonging and purpose. So we founded ETA in late 2019 and then pandemic. And that was a big dramatic uh, starting year for us because as you can imagine with the populations we work with, it's not great to have a pandemic um, with everything closed from schools to senior living communities. But it was in many ways really wonderful too to be part of a new organization at that time because we weren't locked into um, funding or programming restrictions. And fundamentally, my co-founder, Leah Bradley, and I really believe intergenerational as a strategy as opposed to a specific program. 
So we were able to say, okay, well, what do we need to address right now? What does society really need? And we felt like something we could really tackle was the social isolation that a lot of younger people and older adults were feeling during the pandemic. Um, so that's kind of what we focused on the first couple of years. And then as the community's needs have evolved, we've evolved our work to meet them as they change. You mentioned strategy with your work. So tell us about the work empowering the ages desk. Yeah, so like I said, we've moved past uh, social isolation and we feel like the three issues we're really seeing that we feel like we can impact right now um, in the greater Washington DC area where we work is um, school readiness, uh, civic engagement and workforce development. So um, just real specifically quickly in school readiness, we do a program that trains and supports volunteers um, to match with children and families in Montgomery County Public Schools Head Start and Pre-K programs. So they work together for 18 months on basically whatever that family needs to get that child off to the best possible start in the education system, whether it's um, sort of a informal tutoring or love of learning work with the kids or coaching the parents on navigating the school system, but um, really harnessing the wealth of skills and experience that the older adults in our communities have to bring this three generation approach to getting these kids off to a good start. Um, as far as civic engagement, we partner with schools and senior living communities, um, as well as our own senior volunteer corps, which I will be happy to tell you about in a minute. Um, and we create these small groups of teens and adults that work together every week for seven to eight weeks. Um, they share and compare their life experiences, they learn from each other's perspectives, and they explore their role as part of a larger community. So often that includes uh, the kids coming up with a mini project that addresses some issue they're interested in. So we've had uh, teens write letter to the county council. We've had them start petitions in a homeowners association. Um, one organized a mental health resource fair at their high school. So it's always exciting to see what they come up with, with sort of some knowledge and some support from these coaches that they get to know. And then the third thing real quick is workforce development. Um, we work with schools and community partners to run sessions for teens on like financial literacy, planning and goal setting, um, resumes and interview prep, and basically just trying to bridge the gap between the youth in our community who need coaching and guidance to sort of reach their potential in their career, and then the adults who have that um, support and can give them that coaching and guidance. So you work in three areas, school readiness, civic engagement, and workforce development. Now tell us why intergenerational programming is important. There's a lot of reasons. I guess I would highlight that, you know, we really fundamentally believe in a strengths-based approach and figuring out what each generation brings to the table and seeing it as really bi-directional. Um, and we really feel that our community just can't reach its full potential if we're not um, finding out about and maximizing the skills and um, the strengths of the different parts of our community. And that goes for all the different parts and the ways we separate ourselves, including generations and ages. What about your goals for 2023? So our goals are to take those three areas I mentioned, um, school yeah. readiness, workforce development, civic engagement, and just keep expanding them um, based on sort of the needs we've already identified and needs as they evolve. So for example, we've been doing workforce development um, in high schools thus far, but we're gonna be expanding into a new collaboration with MHP, Montgomery Housing Partnership, and working with middle school students. Um, doing career coaching and exploration. So basically continuing to expand and keep assessing what's going on with the needs we've identified. Now, I want to know about your volunteers. Um, how can somebody become one? Our volunteers are awesome. They are an awesome group of really interesting people and they have all different kinds of life experiences. Um, we tend to work with youth through schools and community organizations. So our individual volunteers are primarily um, adults who are over the age of 50. And if you want to join them, basically you just fill out an application on our website. Because um, we make, uh, well, we strive really hard. I think we succeed at making volunteering really meaningful and personalized. Um, like I mentioned, we have that really strengths-based approach. So we do want to take the time to get to know volunteers, figure out what they're interested in, what their skills and personalities are like, and really match them carefully with a role where they can, you know, they're bringing their best to the community, but also they're in the best position to gain from what they're doing with us. Now, do you have community partnerships with other organizations in Montgomery County? 
Yeah, lots, uh, lots and lots, because we, you know, since we're bringing together different groups, we couldn't do it without them. So um, we have a lot of partnerships with schools and other youth serving organizations, um, local Catholic charities, MCPS, uh, Senior Living Communities, Department of Rec. Um, but basically, we just have this great opportunity to identify the need that we see and then pull together the individuals and the organizations who we think are going to be the most impacted by the work and see what we can put together with them. And we've had a lot of success with that so far. Now, Megan, are there any other benefits of intergenerational programming that you would like to share with us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean... <laughs> It's my passion. It's my co-founder's passion as well. And it's it's really got amazing benefits, I think, that seem obvious. But when you get close to them, you really uh, are kind of still blown away by how powerful it can be. Because there's just not, you know, the same way there's not kids running around on the streets playing stickball anymore or getting to know their neighbors. You're not getting to know your maybe your older neighbor next door. Or there aren't these same opportunities to get to know people outside your immediate circle or outside your family or maybe outside your school community. So it's really kind of a unique and powerful experience to get connected with other generations and other populations in your community that you're not hanging out with all the time. Um, and we find that like people, especially the volunteers we have working with us, they get involved because they're lovely, generous people and they want to be giving back to the community and supporting others, but they are really um, kind of blown away by how much they gain. And then not only them, but how much the community benefits from having this kind of interaction and sort of uh, crossing crossing the borders that we end up having in communities. All right, last question, Megan. How can we stay in contact with you? Please stay in contact with us. So um, the best way is our website, which is www.empoweringtheages.org. And um, if you go there, you can get on our mailing list to get our monthly newsletter. You can submit a volunteer application or just find out more if you're interested. And there's links to our social media and website pages on all the programs I described and everything we're doing. Thank you so much, Megan, for all this information today. I know that the team at 50 Plus, as well as the Commission on Aging, we look forward to staying in touch with Empowering the Ages. That's great. Thanks so much, Katie. And thanks to all your viewers. Well, that concludes our program for today. As you can see, the voices of those 50 Plus matter every day and in every way. To learn more about services for seniors in Montgomery County, please visit the Montgomery County Seniors website by visiting montgomerycountymd.gov senior or call the Senior Resource Line at 240-777-3000. And as always, thank you for watching 50 Plus in Montgomery County. Happy Women's History Month.